my name is Nadege Florimond and welcome to another episode of Dishing It. And guess who we're dishing it with today? The amazing and fabulous Miss Mona Scott Young. Hello, Mona. Am I in the shot yet? <laughs> <laughs> You're always in the shot. <laughs> Hello, Nadege. I don't believe you finally have me here doing this. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. Absolutely. Once I heard you were an amazing cook, I was like, I have to get you in the but kitchen. But you heard that from me, so does it really count? But other people vouch for you. <laughs> so when other people vouch for you, I believed you. So I know you're very busy, so thank you for taking your day. No, the funny part is she only picks right after I've cooked for maybe <laughs> 70 people to come over the following day and say, let's cook all over again. We're yes. making your famous mac and cheese. But before we get to cooking, yes. let's chat a little. What do we want to chat about? I don't know who in the world does not know who you are, but most people know you through Love & Hip Hop creator, producer, and fabulous Yes, but that is not that. my claim to fame. I actually started in music years before that, but people don't know that about me. Love & Hip Hop was such a phenomenal TV hit that they think that I kind That's of hatched, you just popped I hatched out of an egg. But yes, prior to that, 20-something years in the business, I'd manage recording artists. I was partnered in a company called Violator, and over the course of, say, my 20-plus years in music, we managed a ton of people. We managed Missy Elliott. I still manage Missy to this you day, but Busta Rhymes and 50 Cent and, you know, Maxwell, Mariah Carey, Fantasia, Tweed, Mob Deep, Tribe Called Quest. It was a very, very long career. Okay, yeah. okay. So how did you make this transition into, like, being, like, Ah, it was interesting because I just decided after having done music for a very long time that I wanted to do something different. And um, back in 2005, I had an opportunity to produce a TV show with Missy Elliott. Okay. It was for then UPN. And it was one of the first uh, competition elimination shows. Okay. It was called The Road to Stardom. I remember that. You remember that? I, I actually ended that. up in front of the camera, <laughs> thanks to Missy. But um, that was my first kind of foray into television, and I got bit by the bug. And then, so then, uh, fast forward, 2008, I branched off and started Mona Me Entertainment. And my focus was developing content for television. Thank Where you. does that come from? The name. Thank Where you. does that come from? It's a double entendre. You know, it's kind of a play of my name, Mona. But it's also a nod to my Haitian French heritage, Mon Ami. Oh, my. yes. My other company was called Violator. <laughs> Very different in tone and attitude. I spent many years being a violator. <laughs> and then I decided in this, my second phase in life, I wanted to do business with people I enjoy doing business with on okay. my terms. Okay. And I wanted to consider the people that I was in business with my friends. Okay. So okay. that is how Mon Ami was born. You're known as the ultimate boss lady, boss chick, as I see they tag you on Instagram. <laughs> like, what is your advice to women entrepreneurs that's trying to get out there, especially in the music business and entertainment? I always say be aware of the fact that you are a woman in business, but don't be limited by that. Mm. Don't allow that to define what you know, your limitations are or what your possibilities are. Uh -huh. And certainly don't ever allow it to deter you in pursuing anything that you want to pursue. I, I firmly believe that sometimes we, you know, put our own limitations on ourselves. Yeah, They're kind yeah. of self-imposed. Can't be like, I'm woman, I'm woman, uh, oh, yeah. woe is me. Oh, woe is me, <laughs> but sometimes it's like, can I really do that? Mm -hmm. You know, and the thing I always say to people is nobody's gonna believe in you as much as you believe in yourself, right? It's your job to convince other people that you are capable of. Okay. So um, that's always my advice. Just okay. do you, don't let anything stand in your way. Put those blinders on, look straight ahead. You know, Open I mean, be, be, aware, be aware, but be focused. Focus. Exactly. Okay. Let's talk about your mom. My your, mom. <laughs> yeah, you see, yeah, you see My mom is strange. the quintessential <laughs> Haitian mother. Yes, as a matter of fact, she still lives in Haiti to this day. She's there right now. She's really? Speaking. Absolutely. Oh my God. <laughs> she just celebrated her birthday, right? Not too long ago? No, well, her birthday is actually in October. Oh, okay. Yeah, I posted a picture and everyone <laughs> thought it was her birthday and started saying happy birthday, yes. But my mother, yes, yeah, she lives in, in Haiti. We're actually building her house now in okay. Quarter Bouquet. Oh, okay, okay. Yes, yes, yes. But she's very happy. She's, she so, will never leave her country, she says. <laughs> but I know you say you learned a lot from her, and I know mm -hmm. you, you credit her for who mm -hmm. you are today. So what would be the, like you said, like, what is the ultimate lesson you've taken from this mm. very Haitian woman, as well, you call Well, to say her. I learned a lot from her is a bit of an understatement, right? I learned everything from her. Mm -hmm. I am because of her. Mm -hmm. um, everything about the way she carried herself to her ability to persevere and um, to overcome, the, just the resiliency. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I always say uh, the 
earthquake in Haiti was a defining moment for me because I actually had an opportunity to get out there mm. after the earthquake. And it was just really looking into the faces of people, seeing my own face, being, you know, on the ground of the country <laughs> that I know I came from. Mm -hmm. That was self-affirming, like nothing that I've, I'd ever experienced in my life. Mm -hmm. So, you know, my mother, I have to give her, as much as she drives me up a wall. She's a mom. Yes, you do, mama. <laughs> I love her to death. And um, she absolutely is responsible for everything that I've been able to accomplish in life. So what's next for you? I know you have mix. You know, I what's... mix my mix Moscato. We should be sipping on that right I now know. as we cook. Next segment. Exactly. <laughs> but, um, you know, anything that God puts in my way, you know, anything that I come across, my mantra is just like, whatever it is, I can. And so, you know, I never have any kind of preconceived notions about what the next phase of my life is going to offer. Yeah, I'm very is. open and, and, and very accepting and obedient of whatever God has in store for me. That so, and I, I enjoy that. It's an exciting way to live because I never know what's around the corner. And I love that word obedient. So let's get into you, this You're macaroni. ready to be obedient let's here? Let's be obedient. I'll, All right. be, I'll be the sous chef today. So okay. you cook. I love this part. <laughs> I don't have to cook. I kept the fire on under the mac and cheese because after I boil it, I like to keep it hot because then it makes everything melt, melt nice. nice. Yes. Okay. So let me grab that. So we're making Mona's famous macaroni and cheese. We're making Mona's a mac and cheese. A yes. Mac and cheese. Yes, so we pour it in there. And I keep, ooh, ooh. be careful. <laughs> See, that's a no-no. Do not just pour. Do not burn You're liable yours. to burn yourself. <laughs> but I keep a little bit of the water in there because, again, you want it to be juicy. I think, yeah. for me at least, that's one of the biggest, um, I don't want to say mistakes because Lord knows I'm not a professional <laughs> chef. Issues. But I think <laughs> that if it's not juicy, you get that dry mac and cheese. I agree. So now I have that al dente 11 minutes thing. Let yeah. it boil and cook. So that it can be nice and juicy. I like that. All right. So I like to use a number of different cheeses, right? You so the first thing I'll do is I'll put the butter in there because you want the butter to start to mix. Okay. And this should probably make about two pans. Okay. Right? So I put a whole stick of butter in there. Okay. This, I didn't say this was healthy. <laughs> Mac and okay. cheese does not have to it's be healthy. It's not supposed to be healthy. This is if you want some good, juicy <laughs> mac and cheese. That's what you do. Yes, that. exactly. And I like to use a number of different cheeses because I like it to be really cheesy. So I use sharp cheddar. Sharp. So we just kind of mix it all in, and it's going to be really cheesy. We have a lot of cheese. Trust me, this is not for the lactose intolerant. <laughs> I love it. All right, and you, you just kind of mix it up. And then I like to use mild cheddar. The sharp cheddar kind of gives it a little bit of a kick. Yes. You ever ate macaroni and cheese that just didn't have any it's real? Just, it's just bland. <laughs> yeah, I like it to have a so little bit of a bite. So cheese is the secret. Cheese is the secret, oh, right? Cheese. And then you're mixing it as you go along. And then you've got the butter in there and stuff. So it's yeah. hot. So all of that, it's also it's melting. All of that goodness is like... just kind of melting. And then I like to use Monterey Jack as mm. well. Yeah, Monterey Jack in Getting there. Mona's secrets right here. Yeah, so I just mix the cheeses. And one of the things, and I don't know if it's a little bit of cheaty, cheating, but when you want your mac and cheese to be really, really cheesy, you know there's Velveeta. Yes. And Velveeta actually makes a cheddar cheese. So I use the Velveeta cheddar. You have that Just right to give it, I have that as well. Oh. And if you can see, I don't know if you guys can catch that. Tilt the camera down a little bit. See how it's becoming a nice little cheesy situation. Soup. Yes. And I like it to be like a little bit soupy. Mm -hmm. Just because again. So we're going to mix the That's Velveeta. That's the Velveeta. Yes. And the Velveeta is a little sticky. But That's what you want for your yes, mac and cheese. Yes, you want it to be all. Let me mix for you. You want to mix that I for me? I mix. Okay, don't make a mess. Don't make a <laughs> don't mess. Make a mess. Yes. <laughs> and then I have like kind of just a combination of seasonings. What? It's salt have? and pepper. And there's this seasoning that's called uh, Complete mm -hmm. that I like because the sodium content is not as high. Oh, okay. My husband actually turned me on to that. Oh, okay. Because he's a cook as well. We usually split up. He yeah. makes the main meats and I'll make the sides. So you cook a lot? We cook a lot. Yeah, mm -hmm. we love to entertain. So this is like, again, you said black pepper. Black pepper, the complete seasoning, which has a little bit of a bunch of different things in it. A it's little bit of good. Lowry's, yeah. And you just kind of mix it all in there together, yeah. This is a Gruyere, and I'm just gonna put a little bit in it, but really like what I like to do with this is put it along the top ah. and then kind of mix it in. Okay. So we'll mix a little bit in there. So 
okay. Yeah. Now, we're going to need the eggs, so I'll let you crack the eggs. We need Ooh, about, okay. yeah. How many eggs? Six eggs. eggs. Did you guys do My, this on your own? Um, yeah, you know, we barbecue a lot. We love to entertain. The summertime, we kind of set the summer off with Memorial Day barbecues, and it just became the thing. My mac and cheese, my potato salad, that's for another I've show. i a lot about your <laughs> potato salad. <laughs> so do you change up your mac and cheese, depending on what you have around? Sometimes, or? sometimes I'll put, like, a crust on it with some breadcrumbs, but most of the times, um, they, Yes, you whisk it up now. People get whisk it with there Whiz. we go. People get very offended when I change the recipe. And they're like, <laughs> they're oh, it offended. doesn't taste the same. What is? What'd you do different? So this is so, the winner right here. Yeah, what this is the right this is the um, the classic. Let's call it the classic. How much I'm going to pour a little bit of milk in here. Okay. And I'm using condensed milk, evaporated. not the condensed evaporated milk. Evaporated exactly. Milk. Condensed milk would be bad. I'm using evaporated just so it's creamy. I have the whole milk here, but I, I don't think I need the whole milk. You'll just keep it sometimes evaporated. I just do it just in case I need it to be a little bit more liquid. Juicier. <laughs> but juicier, I don't think I, I like it. Yeah. And then of course you're gonna add the eggs in to keep it all together. Cause if you don't <laughs> You ever had that mac and cheese that just falls apart on the plate? Yes. You don't want that. It's you want it to be, to be nice. juicy and soft, but you still want it to kind of have that stick nice cake like. What am I gonna do with all this mac and cheese? Uh, crew. Okay, you guys are gonna have mac and cheese? Because this is gonna be a lot. There goes my no carb diet. Okay, there we go. After mac and cheese, we start tomorrow. All right. <laughs> and like I said, this probably Ooh. makes about two. That looks right? good. There we so go. So all your juicy flavors are in there. Exactly. And this goes in the oven. And you just stick it in the oven, and what? then you'll know because the top will get nice and cr Crusty. like a little bit of a crust on top of it, and it gets nice and brown and bubbly. Oh. And yep. then when do you sprinkle this? Well, we're going to do that right before we stick it. Are we getting ready to go in the oven? Let's go in the oven. Okay. Because they want to eat. Okay, got <laughs> it. So we're going to save some for the second so that's pan. that's your gruyere. Yeah. And then I probably would too, and I've stuck it all in there. But sprinkle a little bit more of the a sharp cheddar on top as Okay. Well. Yeah. All right. And what I'm temperature do we put ooh, this in ooh, the ooh. oven? 350. 350. Yeah, and you probably want to get your oven going prior so that it's nice and hot by the time you put it in. Okay, so we'll stick this in the oven and then we'll be right back. <laughs> all right, let's do this. And we're back with Mona Scott Young. And while her bubbly mac and cheese is cooking in the oven. Bacon, can you smell it? it I smell it. Smells it. Amazing, right? <laughs> We're gonna check on it. How is it Look looking? Look at how oh pretty she looks. It's beautiful. It yes. really bubbles though. Yes, it does bubble. <laughs> <laughs> That's the juiciness. What are we gonna make now? We're going to make Haitian style meatballs. A lot I of love those. A lot of people have been asking mm -hmm. me for the recipe, but we're gonna flip it up a little bit. We're going to basically turn it into a meatball sub. Okay. Haitian style. Oh, that's why we have this nice bread. Yes. And then I hear you. Is this Haitian bread? It's just regular bread. It's regular You could use regular okay. Italian bread. Well, you could use Haitian bread, whatever bread you have laying around. Got it. And then I hear your famous sauce. Haitian tea. Not so sauce. famous, <laughs> but I like to make a nice onion sauce. You yes. know, it goes with everything, especially if you're making meatballs, meatballs. that'll be good with that. And yes. then we're going to use that on our sandwich. So Ooh, we're, nice. we're going to okay. start nice ground beef. And I'm going to have a little mix, sangria. I should have some of that yes. before I dirty my left hand. <laughs> See, that's the beauty of it. It's in a ready-to-drink bottle. I you just that. open the and top. it's so small and cute. This is really delicious, though, I have to say. I love this drink. So we have our ground beef, and we're Haitian, so we have to add citron, which is lime, mm -hmm. or if you have vinegar. What does that do to the beef? Does it soften it just, at all? Just a little acid to okay. kind of like remove some of the bacteria, because you know it. acid okay. kills everything. So we add a little lime juice, our famous epis, which is, I have another recipe for that on another show, but that's our scallions, our onions, mm -hmm. our uh, parsley, <coughs> And that's our mix. Our this is everything. very similar to, in Spanish cooking, they have like their sofrito. This, it's right? exactly it's like a sofrito, thing. except the ingredients are very much. I have to taste a little bit of that. I know that's probably. Anything in here that can kill me if eaten raw? No, it's all natural. This is a bad habit. Ingredient. I taste everything as I'm cooking. <laughs> I didn't do it with the mac and cheese. I didn't want you guys to judge me. <laughs> you Ooh, have to good. taste your food. You have oh, this to. This is good. What's in there that's... So, like I said, it's a little bit, since I know I was making meat, so it's a little acid already. Mm -hmm. There's a little vinegar in there, or parsley, or scallions, garlic, everything you need to really... There's something else I recognize. Nice, natural flavors. Oh, why do I taste... Oh, it'll come to me. Mango? <laughs> Is that mango pepper? I can't tell you all the secrets. I feel my... like there's mango <laughs> hot sauce in there. No, no, no. <laughs> 
And then we have mm. our seasoning mix, which is okay. basically garlic powder, onion powder, and a little adobo. Okay. I love garlic powder. I put it right. in everything. You I love like that adobo. I love adobo. There's something it does to the food, but my husband is so conscious about sodium levels and hypertension, especially, you know, black people. We have yes, uh, it's, it's uh, a good, propensity for yeah. that. So he's got me away from adobo, which I hate. Mrs. Dash is really a good alternative. Mrs. Dash is too extreme. That's the other end of the spectrum. <laughs> because it has no No, salt. that stuff complete, I was telling you, it's called complete, completo, whatever. It, but it has everything in it, and you taste flavor. Without the But salt. it doesn't have a high I have sodium to try level. The complete. Yeah. And then we're going to add a parsley. Fresh. That's the thing about Ooh, like most parsley. Caribbean cooking. It's mm -hmm. very fresh, good natural flavors. We chop up our parsley. Then some And thyme. you see me, I'm the big helper, right? <laughs> It's getting okay. my drink on some crushed red pepper you could Ooh, nice. use you could use mm. actual scotch bonnet but i think the crushed red pepper is a nice balance we it's have not too hot scotch bonnet right here you we don't want the real thing sauce. all right but i'm not going to use all of these in the sauce <laughs> we won't be able to eat it cut up onions okay so really that's why i love meatballs it's just really let me a help mix. you with this thank stuff, you yo. mona thank yes, you for okay. helping me <laughs> she's got red peppers red peppers thank you green peppers <laughs> and what else Green peppers right there. What else do you need to put in this there? This nice bread you see over there. Ah, so what is this? You made like a little bread mixture prior? Yes. Yeah, so it's and like it's bread and I milk? I use milk. I use milk. You could use uh, water. See that? You but put bread milk. and milk together. Just, just to soften it. Growing up, my dad, because I grew up with my dad, and he's an awesome cook, I have to say. So we used to use uh, potatoes ah. in our meatballs. So, so potatoes probably gives it a nice little mushy Gee, consistency. But it's still, at the same time, it still have a little and crunchiness. And it holds it together, yeah. And it holds it together. Yeah. So this is all for that See, reason. See, this is where I would have gone wrong. Cause I, I never would have thought to put the bread the in The bread there. in? Mm. So what happens when you don't have the bread? It just kind of falls apart, it the meatballs? Just, yeah, it won't fall apart. But I feel like I said, it just makes it a little bit more gummy mm -hmm. and nice. That nice glue that you love right. in Haitian style. Now, Dej and I were talking off camera about how as Haitians, we taste everything. <laughs> so, like I said before, I was tasting that seasoning. I would taste that meat. I will taste this that This is meat. salmonella, <laughs> poison. This is everything they tell you not that's to do. We but do I it. would taste that meat. But that's why we put the lime juice in it, the it vinegar. It drives my husband crazy. I'll go that. like, yes. he's like, what I'm are you always, doing? No, we do that, even on the show. But I have to make sure that it tastes good as I'm coming along. I am tasting it. What are you going to do with the eggs? Is that going in there as well? That's the so final that's to glue hold it together. to hold it together. Yes. Don't listen to us with tasting mm, this stuff. I tasted we, it. We will not be responsible for any trips to the emergency room. <laughs> Take a little bit more salt and let's throw okay. the eggs in there. All right, I'll get the eggs. And Do you you don't blend the marinade? No, you just, just drop it in, it in there and mix it in. That's it. Gone. Simple dish. This is a messy dish, but it's fun. You could and have the you... kids make this actually. Do your kids cook? Ah, uh, no. They eat <laughs> very well, but they don't do anything. They don't do the no. cooking. <laughs> This mix is tempting, hold on. It's good, right? <laughs> so we'll talk about mix for a little bit. So this is the sangria flavor. Remember, did you I, taste all of it? Oh my God, I love them So all. we launched the sangria with three flavors. It's the tropical, which is the citrus flavors. This is the uh, classico, which is red berries. Oh, and then we delicious. actually have a red berry version as well. So okay. we launched with three flavors I in the uh, sangria line. When we did the brunch, People were they ODing on Yeah, because the then we still have our classics. We've got peach, uh, mango, and regular flavored Moscato coconut. and coconut. Yep. Yes. The coconut. For and you coconut. I islanders, the coconut and the mango. Delicious. Absolutely delicious. And that's really it. It's a little messy, but it's absolutely delicious. And then while this is going on, we're going to turn our fire. Okay. And then put it on high because we want, the, want it to heat up real quickly. And then we're basically just going to roll our meatballs and some flour, and then we're going to get them frying. And Mona is going to bless us with her sauce. So while I'm rolling, Mona... The sauce is a trial and error <laughs> work in progress. Sometimes it works, sometimes not so much, but it's just, it makes everything nice and tasty. So we'll make some of that as well. Okay, so how do we start? We're going to add a little bit of oil to this. And we're not measuring anything, we're so not. everything is just to taste. Oh, Nadege, I can't believe you have me out here day before I have to get on a plane to head <laughs> to L.A. Thank you, Mona. Thank yes. you, thank you, thank you. I'm excited about L.A. I'm actually... What's happening um, in L.A.? Is this I'm working show? on a talk show. Your, it's your not own? my own. No, no, no. It's Amber Rose. Amber Rose? Yeah, I so Amber's going to have a talk show, and we're shooting it. Oh, I'm cutting up some scotch bonnet peppers in here. 
Oh, nice. Oh, you're bold. You do that with your hands, bare hands? Yeah, but what yeah. else? How would you do it? You know, some people put on gloves because they're afraid of the heat. Uh, then you wash your hands. <laughs> you do not rub your eyes after this. Um, you kind of so, know that, right? <laughs> yeah. So yeah, we Talk. are shooting, and I'm gonna put some uh, sliced onions. You just slice them into rings. Oh, nice. So uh, I'm yeah, I'm going to put some more oil in here. So we're shooting a talk show. It's kind of Amber's point of view on life. Oh. Yeah, and it should. It's a late night show. It's for VH1. Late night. Yep, Amber. late night, <laughs> 11 p.m. on Fridays. Will she have guests or? She what will is have the, guests. So okay. she'll have guests. It'll be topical. Life, pop culture. You know, Amber is like an uber feminist. You know, yes. she sees the world through her own lens. And we're going to try to capture that in the show. That's beautiful. When is so, that slated to air? Well, actually, we're shooting the pilot now, and then we're going to go right into series. Okay. I've got so many projects because I'm also going to Houston um, and Miami. Cause what is this? This is tomato paste. <laughs> So we've got our onions, we've got our scotch bonnet peppers. I'm gonna stir, stir some tomato paste in here with a little bit of water. You probably make this very differently, so don't No, judge this me. is exactly how it's supposed okay. to go. You good, Mona. <laughs> and me, I'm going to get my flour together. I usually put it in a cup whenever I'm making okay. meatballs. Because sometimes you could put it in a plate and then you roll it that way, but sometimes you don't wanna get flour all over your hands. And what I don't like is that mixture of the flour and the and the uh, meatballs because they get all sticky in your hands. Okay. So I just kind of like make form my ball. So I you know drop what I it in there. Do? I didn't get any seasoning, but I'm going to be experimental. Can I just try some of yes, that in there? Yes, you can. This seems like the kind of thing you could put in anything. Yes. So what would you normally put in this? Just like just like salt, the same. Just, yeah, exactly. Like whatever seasoning mix you like. And a little bit of water. I think I'm going to let me. And then you see when you put it in the cup, you have your nice meatball without oh, getting your yeah, hands all dirty. Oh, that's pretty. Oh, that's smart. <laughs> that's how the Haitian old folks do it in Haiti. Someone that. tell me you sometimes you actually put water in your tomato paste. I do. I do in the can because you got to get it all out of there. <laughs> did you cook growing up or is this something you did? Um, actually, I didn't cook. My, you know, sister, uh, she did a lot of the cooking. I did a lot of the eating. That was our partnership. But as I, you know, got older and of course got married and I started um, taking more of an interest in cooking and stuff, I know what I like, I know what I like it to taste like. So a lot of times I just experiment with stuff. Really? Yeah. So is your cooking like a blend of Haitian? Soul? My cooking is a blend of a lot of things. What kind of seasoning are you using? I use the blend of seasonings, you know, a little salt, pepper, but I like those little packets of seasoning mm. whose name shall remain nameless. Nameless. <laughs> uh, <laughs> But you basically can use whatever flavors and yes. you like in there. Meatballs. Kind of Making some big up. meatballs because I want to make a nice juicy meatball sub. Mmm. Those are nice. Your sauce is almost ready. Mm-hmm. So you know what? Let's fire up those meatballs, get this sauce together, and yep. when we come back, we're going to put it all together, and me and Mona and the crew. We're going to chow down. We're going to chow down. <laughs> So we're back and we're putting it all together. All together. Mona's bubbling mac and cheese. Oh my God, that is beautiful. Wait, that's hot. Don't touch it's, that. I have chef's hands. Okay. I can do that. Here, let's <laughs> tilt it for the camera. See how pretty that is? Yes, it is nice pretty. Nice and brown She's on like top. She's a proud mother. I am a <laughs> proud like, mother because I didn't know what to expect. <laughs> <laughs> do it all the time. But you know what? So we just made our delicious Haitian, very traditional Haitian meatballs. Yes. That's how you'd make them at I didn't home. taste those, but I you, should taste one. You should. Just to make sure. Just to make sure. Just testing and make sure. Sacrifice, you know, just in case. <laughs> mm. Oh, that's good. So, but like I said, we're going to flip it upside its head a little bit. So now that our meatballs, usually you just have this with the beautiful sauce you just made. Thank you. I love it. Ooh, perfect texture, Mona. Thank you. <laughs> um, but we're going to make a nice meatball sub. Usually the thing about meatballs, they tend to like slip out. Mm -hmm. So I usually like to make little pockets oh. just so I could sit them in there. That's it's like, like a, a little, little boat. That's a little trick. So it's like a little boat. Mm -hmm. And our hands are clean. So we're And just plus it's better when you take out all of that extra bread. Anyway. Bread, exactly. Yes. There you go. It's yes. healthier. It's healthier. So we're going to do that and we're going to... Oh, you know what? Before we do that, I have a little surprise. When I was a kid, this was my favorite cheese. It's called Laughing Cow Cheese. Oh, yeah. I every, love that. <laughs> yes. Every Haitian household had this, so 
I'm going to use this as a spread. Mm. And instead of using like our traditional mayo or mm -hmm. something like that, we'll basically butter. <laughs> butter your cheese. cheese. <laughs> We're going to be generous with it because it's a big piece of bread. I got nice piece of Italian bread, but you could use any kind of bread you want. Very good. Butter that up. I'm going to grab another spoon because I know we're going to spread some of the sauce on there. Oh, yes. Make sure we have a good spoon for that. Definitely. I'm back. Thank you for <laughs> hosting us, Mona. No, absolutely. <laughs> this was nice. Okay. And then I have a little bit of chopped scallion. Okay. Green onion, some people call it, just to add that nice fresh flavor. And then we're going to add our meatballs. Try to squeeze four in there. Nice. See, nice. It's there, mm -hmm. nice and perfect. And we're going to add some watercress. Another. Oh. I feel like these are very that's underutilized. A yeah, that's parsley. Let's Here's see. the watercress. Oh. <laughs> okay. For those of you at home, <laughs> this is parsley. This, this is, is watercress. watercress. <laughs> so we're going to add that instead of traditional lettuce, because in mm. Haiti. Watercress is very big for breakfast or lunch or lunch. It's good, mm, right? It's good. It's a little tangy. Mm hmm Let me taste the difference here. And then we're going to top it Ooh, off. definite difference. With mm -hmm. some red onions. You know what I don't have? If I had some pickles, mm. I would add that right on top. We're going to add some of our wonderful sauce. Why not use your delicious timali sauce that Mona just made and you spread that over your sandwich. Look at this. Very nice. Very pretty. <laughs> and you have your nice Haitian meatball, meatball sub. sub. Delish. And we're going to tear this down and then you're going to plate some of the mac, mac and cheese. cheese. And we're okay. going to get some forks so oh. we can eat. And usually you'll let it sit a little longer because you want it to settle in so that it's not too mouché. Oh, yes. yes, so it sets. Yeah, but I like it see. like this. I like it all hot. Oh, there you go. Let's oh. see. There we oh go. Oh, my God. Ooh. This there right we here. Go. Juicy. Taste. Oh, my God. Since you're going to taste on camera. <laughs> oh. Moment of truth. Oh, it's hot. It's very hot. Oh, my God. It's so soft. Mm. Oh, my God. Can't Ooh. wait for this. I've been hearing a lot about hot. it. <laughs> Hot as in good or hot mm. as in I'm burning up? <laughs> Bo. Oh, my God. It's good, huh? I see what you're saying. Mm -hmm. How soft it is. You want it to be juicy and soft. I like that word, juicy. Juicy. <laughs> oh, this juicy mac and cheese. That's what we're going to call it. <laughs> That's what we're going to This is delicious. Oh, thank and you. And you taste all the different cheeses in there. We do, yeah. So, Mona, talk to us. What's next for you? What's next for me? Oh my God, so much going on right now. I've, I just um, closed the publishing deal with Simon & Schuster. So I'm going to be doing imprints. I'm very excited about that. Just continuing the stories and continuing to speak to the audience that we've built on the television shows. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I always wear my rings. That's so I am doing, thank you, a collection of what I'm calling M Power Rings. <laughs> And so, probably. yes, I am partnered with um, LL's wife, Simone Smith. She has her collection of jewelry. Okay. So I'm doing a collection of rings and pot rings. Um, ooh, I'm doing a mobile app for Love & Hip Hop. So that's going to launch in the fall. And it's an opportunity. Our tagline is, get into the game. And it's, you know, how to be a mogul, you rise up through the ranks, you get your music career going, but all on a mobile app. So I love it. a lot of fun to play and we're very excited about that. So lots of things happening. I love it. You don't stop. Thank you for empowering all of us. Oh, well, thank you. I love your apron, by the way. Oh, thank you. <laughs> it's so this cute. is my official cooking apron. <laughs> I'm wearing my Haiti Uncovered t-shirt. This yeah. is Princess Porto Prince. <laughs> But I love your apron, so well, next time I want much. one just like it. So we're going to end, but we're going to have some cremas. Did Ooh, you nice. try this cremas? No, I don't I think I make a delicious cremas. Well, let's try it and see what it is. For those of you who don't know, cremas is this delicious coconut rum condensed milk concoction. That is just pure heaven. Super delicious, super fattening. That's why we have them in these tiny little glasses. Tiny glass. You just want it but to look pretty. But they're super <laughs> delicious. Oh, that looks so rich. Yeah, we, I ship these all over. People love it. <laughs> mm. Mona, thank you for dishing it with us. Till next time. Well, thank you for having me. Let me know what you think. Mm. 
Oh, that's good. That's good. Especially with this oh bubbly, my God. juicy This mac and right cheese. here <laughs> is a food and drink coma waiting to happen. I don't want to share. This is a Are nice we going to taste that sandwich? <laughs> we'll consider this one yours. I'll make myself another one. Come mm. on. Let's get you tasting. This is so good. You like it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> with the onions, the watercress. Oh, gosh. All those good flavors in there. Mmm. Oh, this is good. Mmm. <laughs> and then, if you have pickles at home, feel free to add it. Mm hmm You like? Good. That sauce on there is, a, is good, too. So, not only can you have your sauce, your traditional Haitian timari mm -hmm. sauce with your meatballs on the side with your mac and cheese, but you can also make a sandwich out of it. So, till next time, we'll be dishing it. Bye. Oh. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> you like it? <laughs>